If you've been playing Fallout 76 for a while and or you have joined a community such as a YouTube channel or Discord or Reddit, you have probably heard other players mention a mule account or muley. If you've always been curious about what a mule is or what a mule account is and how it works, please stay tuned for the following video because I'll be going over all of it including all the risk involved and how you can do it in different situations. Warning. By attempting to mule, you run the risk of losing your items. So, this is your warning. This is very, very dangerous if you are worried about losing stuff. So, you will be doing this at your own risk. Please do not blame me if you lose items. With that being said, I will be going over everything very, very thoroughly. So, that way there's no miscommunication and what can and cannot happen. So, you'll have to bear with me because it will be a little wordy at times. But it is all necessary so that way no wires get crossed. In Fallout 76, weight management can be a huge problem. From stash space management to carry weight, people have lots of issues and need tips and tricks, and muling can be a solution. So what is a mule? Well, a mule is exactly what it sounds like. It is something that carries all of your crap around for you. So like a mule back in the day, you would load it up with all your junk and then you could walk unencumbered while your beast of burdens, per se, would actually carry all of your stuff. The longer you play Fallout 76, the more the need for the mule increases, especially if you get a bunch of stuff that you really want to use at some point, but you don't want to use it quite yet and it's just taking up stash space or some of your space on your actual character and just weighing you down so if you have items that you just don't want to part with or you have a different build that sometimes you like to switch back and forth between then a mule may be the solution for you so that way you don't end up like this lovely lady here. Like your little bunny rabbit, don't you? Yes, 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 there you go. Ooh, and there's Betsy Blue. You remember Betsy Blue, don't you? Every time yes, I'm yes, over in yes, Cucumber, yes. this is what I think now, about is the scene right here. So the mule will hold everything that you need but don't need at that moment, if that makes sense. And now is the perfect time to create a new mule account. If you have older mules, you may want to consider actually changing these over to the new mules. You may be asking why? Why would I want to create a new mule? Well, if you haven't heard, the new update from Atlantic City has actually brought us a level 20 loadout once you come out of the vault. Why is this a big deal? Well, for starters, most of these loadouts actually come with a level 3 traveling pharmacy. So if you're one of those people that likes to hold on to berry mint hats like I do, or stems, or chems, or what have you, then this will be the perfect build for you. However, be careful because not all the loadouts have level 3 traveling pharmacy. Now, level 3 traveling pharmacy will reduce your weight by 90% for all your stems and chems. So all your aid items will actually have a 90% weight reduction, which means that your mule will now be able to carry a lot more stuff. Not to mention, it will be a lot faster for you to level up the mule to level 50 if you so choose to do so, which would mean that you can actually start storing your script on this character and then they could actually roll you weapons and turn in script at the same time so that way you have that level 50 character that can get you know modules and then roll stuff it just all kind of plays into how you want to use your mule if you use your mule to the fullest as i would like to call it then your mule probably not going to be going anywhere so you might want to make them stationary over at the rusty pick so that way they can turn in the script they can actually buy the modules and then they can roll it raw wash rinse and repeat all in the same little area Another reason to be excited about the level 20 is that you come out with a backpack on and the backpack is already leveled up to level 20, meaning that you can already carry more weight. The other thing is that maybe you have armor that's laying around. That's one of the things I actually keep is my lower level stuff that's actually decent. So that way I can hand it off to my other characters and they can use it when I am trying to start a new character. So if you have like level 20 armor sitting around, you could possibly even take advantage of that. And it may have, you know, weight reduction deep pockets or strength on it and that would also help your cause for carry weight to start us off I'm just going to go right into how I mule with my husband on a private server with fallout first I will be going over all the other possibilities slash scenarios so that way you guys can kind of see why or why not to do things and what things you can should actually consider before you actually start a mule account 
Now, if you're going to mule, the best way to do this is to actually do it with two people, somebody that you really, really, really trust, because then that way you don't have to worry about server crashes or anything like that, like if your electricity goes out, because you could lose everything. So, me and my husband obviously mule together. I have a couple few friends that I trust, and I will mule with them. And anyway, like, you just need to be aware that wherever you put your mule, that mule will not be walking. They will no longer be moving. They will pretty much be stationary. So you need to pick a spot that you're okay with. Now we're actually down here because one of my very first characters that always has weight problems has a house right over there where that sign's at. We normally both have Fallout First. The tune I'm on right now does not have access to Fallout First. So we always have a tent which gives us our stash box and all that good stuff. And as you can see, this character already has Max in there and is already carrying over 500 pounds. So Jason's muling right now. He's going to be putting everything down. Like one of the things that we normally do is, is we actually drop one item on the ground first and then usually kind of feed into the loot bag. It just works better because every once in a while it hasn't happened in years. And I mean in years, things will fall through the world. So I'd always tell you not to drop like up here on top of your actual tent or anything like that. Make sure you're dropping it straight onto the ground because you just don't want anything to fall through. And then we kind of feed into the bag. Now, I don't always do this. He always does this because he lost somebody's legacy weapon one time a long time ago. So he's very superstitious about it. So this is what he normally does. So he's just got a couple things here that he wants me to pick up. So I'll pick them all up. He will leave and come back with his other character. And this is his private server, by the way. As you can see, the tent is already back because his mule is already here. And so what I will do is, is I will transfer all of his items over to his mule. And then he will either, you know, keep them on the person or put them into the stash box, depending on how full his actual mule is. All right. And it's always going to be in the new category, so there's that. Drop it down. And then we will feed right into this. There you go. And so now we have actually muled a few weapons, so that way we could show you guys how it works. Now, if for some reason you are trying to actually trade on a public server, I would never do this alone. I do not recommend this. You basically are going to be taking a huge risk either way that you do it, but I really would not recommend it for you to do it alone. That's just my personal recommendation. I just think it's a bad idea because lots of terrible things can happen because number one, you got to have a server, a way to get back to your server. So you need to have at least a friend playing that you know is going to be in that world. So therefore they're going to know probably that you're mule in anyway. So why not just use that friend to start with? The next thing that I would tell you is, is in a public server is that if you do have to do it, even if it's between people that you know, do it where there's not a lot of traffic. Don't do it at White Springs. Don't do it at, you know, Nuka World on Tour. Don't do it at a place where there's actually an event that can pop up. Do it somewhere off grid where people are not going to be. So that way you don't have any issues with people possibly coming up and grabbing your stuff while you're dropping it on the ground or transferring it into a container. Now, if you're planning on muling by yourself, the first thing I would say is, is do not drop your items on the ground. You need to find a location where you can actually, like, transfer your items in, like a dresser or a suitcase or just pretty much anywhere. Just make sure that you can actually transfer your items in and you know where that location's at and that your mule is close by as normal. Now, what I would actually suggest you use, if you can, based on where your location is, is a donation box. Now, the donation boxes are supposed to be more stable than some of the other locations, and these things are everywhere. The first one was at Vault 76, and now they have them everywhere. They have them at the Wayward, they're at the train stations, they're outside of White Springs, they're at Nuka World on Tour, and at Foundation. I did not see one at Crater, but these things are literally everywhere. They have the stop sign. It says donations on it. But I would basically still only do this, though, if you're in a private server. Because the donation box is definitely a free-for-all. But if you put something anywhere, it's a free-for-all. So take this how you will. 
you just need to make sure that you have everything like all your ducks in a row that there's not going to be any complications like you don't want to you know not have paid your electric bill that day and your electricity is going to be cut off or you have a bad storm coming or there's an ice storm or they have a prepared outage for your internet like you don't want anything terrible to happen where you can actually not be able to get back into your private server because once you see building like building your world again, that means that your stuff is gone if you have already dropped your stuff off. Our last option for muling is if you yourself have two accounts. Yes, like two actual accounts on two different platforms. So whether that be two Xboxes or if you have a PC and you have Steam and then you have Microsoft that you can do Xbox or what have you. Either way, as long as you have two separate accounts with two separate platforms, you should be able to actually mule between the two. You can log in both into the same server. You do not have to have a private server. You could do this in a public server. Just use the other rules as I've already mentioned, you know, about being safe and all. And that way you can just, you know, cut out the middleman. It's just you and you. I will be going over the main points to recap and do a takeaway of everything that you've learned in this video. So stay tuned for that. It will be at the end and I'll go over a couple extra things too. But let's go over how you can actually maximize your mule and take advantage of it and you can hold more stuff. I already briefly discussed armor. So if you have armor that has weight reduction on it, like you have all weapon weight reduction pieces, make sure that your tune is actually carrying all of the weapons. Don't put them in your stash box because that will just take up extra stash space that you do not need to be taken up. Because obviously if you got a weapon that weighs 10 pounds and only weighs a pound on your actual tune, why would you put that into your stash space when you could be putting all your armor in there? Another item to consider is, is every account can have up to five characters. Now if your main character and your mule is under the same account, that means that you share your legendary card unlocks. So if your main character has unlocked all the legendary card slots, that means that your mule also has all the legendary card slots unlocked. So take advantage of that and at least put the strength card in so that way you'll have an extra five pounds of carry weight. In that same way, if you're trying to actually improve your mule, you can allow your mule to claim all of your card pack and perk points that you get on the scoreboard. You can allow them to claim it, and then that way you can actually improve your mule. Especially if they're level 20, because they will have access to some pretty awesome cards. Another item to consider is, is if you are playing on muling power armor pieces, you need to make sure that you have a power armor frame for your mule. That is because a power armor frame weighs 10 pounds. Power armor pieces most of the time weigh anywhere from 8 to about 15 pounds a piece. And 5 pieces is a lot, but you can put 5 pieces of power armor onto a frame and it still only weighs 10 pounds. That will save you a lot of carry weight space and stash space. Another way to save space is to actually take any weapons or armor that you've already used and are not planning to use, but you've decked out or improved or modified modified in some way and you take those mods off so that way you decrease the weight of those items. So there are several key takeaways from this video. First of all, make sure you take your time. Do not rush because you could make a mistake and that could cost you dearly. Number two, always know where your mule is located. Number three, always know where you have placed your stuff if you're storing it by yourself and you plan to do things solo. Number four, if you're starting a new mule, make sure that they're in an appropriate space, wherever that may be for you in regards to your needs, as they will eventually not be able to fast travel for most players. This takeaway is really aimed at people who are doing this solo, which is make sure that your mule can actually carry whatever items you're dropping. If you don't have stash space or you've reached your excess amount of weight, you will not be able to pick up any items. The worst part is, is when you get to this weight, there's no real warning until you've gotten there and then all of a sudden any item you want to drop is gone like it literally gets destroyed you can't pick it back up it is gone gone so just be aware of this and be cautious of this before you start getting yourself into any type of muling situation never ever drop your stuff on top of structures including inside your own tent make sure that if you're trading items that they are tradable items meaning that they are not 
you know, character locked, like your Secret Service armor, your Union Power armor, your Auto Axes, etc. In the same token, make sure that you take off all of your paints, whether it's on your weapons or your armor or your power armor. With that being said, make sure that if any box pops up at all on your screen that you're actually reading it and not just spamming through it, because you could potentially lose what you have placed on the ground. So, do you mule already or are you thinking about getting a mule? Hopefully this video has actually helped you understand what a mule is and all the possible things that could go wrong or things you could run into whenever you decide to mule alone or with another player in a public server or in a private server. If you have taken anything away from this video, make sure to leave me a big Vault Boy thumbs up and consider nuking that subscribe button on the way out and possibly sharing this video with others who need this information. I want to thank you guys for watching and I hope that you have enjoyed the video and I do want to take a moment to give a big thank you and shout out to my channel members, the Death Claws. You guys seriously make this possible. Without you, I would not be able to continue to do this channel and I really do appreciate you for that. So thank you from the bottom of my heart and I will see you guys in the wasteland. Take care.